Good evening, everybody. Sound check. Can you hear me? Can you hear us? Can you hear me? If you can hear me, just indicate by saying, I can hear you. Yes, we said 8.30. So, we're here. Can you hear me? Please, if you can hear me, say, I can hear you loud and clear. Good evening. Okay, I need you to say, I can hear you loud and clear. Hello? Yes, sir. Just say loud and clear. Good evening. So, I'm going to add Pastor Jerry now, who's waiting. Fantastic. So... I'm going to quickly add Pastor Jerry, the one I call the fireman. So, Pastor Jerry, I'll invite. PJ, I just sent you an invite now. Okay. Um... Can you get me my other phone so I can monitor with Pastor Jerry? I need to make sure that he's gotten my invite. I've invited him. Okay, let me send him a message on my other phone. Hello, PJ, are you there? Okay, I'll send it again. Send another invite. Praise God, praise God. Uh, amen. I'm just waiting for Pastor Jerry to join. Good hmm. evening, Pastor Nat. <laughs> Day of life. <laughs> Good evening, Pastor Nat. Good evening, sir. Good to have you live. Pleasure is mine. Pleasure is mine. Praise, Praise God. God. Amazing. Yeah. Sure that they would be one of a kind because I like I said to you, I I purposely did not want to send you the questions ahead of time because we want it as continuous and organic as possible from your heart. And then I uh, think that at some point we will have um, time, you know, pray and minister to the people as the Lord leads you. Yes, so if, if you don't mind, uh, would you help us with a word of prayer? In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Father, we thank you for such a koinonia, for such an atmosphere where you're going to showcase all that you are doing in this season. Father, we are saturated the atmosphere with grace, with power, and with the blood of Jesus. Father, we only decree and declare that the ordinance of the Most High will prevail at this time. Father, we ask, O oh God, as we do not 
take this moment for granted. Lord, let angels be on guard to deliver all that divinity has ordained for this hour. Nothing missing and nothing broken. In Jesus' Amen. name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, for those of you who are joining us, um, tag your friends, send a message, tell them something is brewing, something is happening, Pastor Jerry is online, I'm online, we are going to just share, you know, um, I, I happen to give Pastor Jerry a name that is exclusive to me, I call him Fireman, so I have the copyrights to that name. Okay, um, for me the idea is, is, is to to let people in on, you know, Pastor Jerry, as a behind the scenes, before NSPPD, before the signs and wonders, to just um, let people into, I mean, some of the, the, the stories that make up the glory. And also, um, perhaps the travail of the glory, the weight of this glory, the weight of... Um, a generation, the weight of, I dare say, um, the globe resting, you know, on a young man who's carrying the mantle of prayer, fire, and signs and wonders, you know, just um, to encourage someone out there, a young minister, you know, maybe a believer, okay. Um, but I'll start this way. I, I have, I've known Pastor Jerry for some time. I think right from the time of Streams of Joy Fellowship, you know, Streams of Joy Fellowship, when you met in a secondary school. I remember I know more here. Okay, so um, I know for sure that Pastor Jerry is not one that just blew, that people, like, you know, like people say, he didn't just emerge. Um, I, I, I may not know much, you know, about your, your story from the past, but I've been privy to a little bit, you know, when he was a you know, school, and from the time I released um, Someone's Knocking at the Door, the Book of Life, and I remember singing the Book of Life, you know, on a, on a service in the evening, and, you know, people were sober and all of that. So I've known a little bit, and then from when the church started and from, you know, I, I know that the signs and wonders, the miracles began way before NSPPD. I know that, you know, you, you would share, you would call me to share about the dead rising, you know, I remember the the story of um, was it a child who was carried by the road and they stopped by the church, you know, came back to life. So we want to know a little bit about that. But before we get there, let's meet Pastor Jerry. Let's know his full name. Is the Jerry Jeremiah? Is the Jerry? You know this, please. You know, for the sake of um, the records, please introduce yourself. Okay, uh, so uh, my name is Jeremiah. Actually, the word uh, the word that that's the name is actually Jeremiah for fool. Um, so now thinking about it, I I now believe that I share a lot with. Um, now this is a, it's a very prophetic. I think I share a lot with Prophet Jeremiah in the Scripture. You know, so thinking about how broken he was, thinking about how prophetic you know he was, and all of that. So and. Um, so the full name, the name is uh, Jerry um, Uchechuku, you know, is it? And um, I've been born again for a very long time. I gave my life to Christ uh, pretty much uh, when I was um, eight years, between seven and eight. I'm not too sure now. And all of that, that's when I gave my life to Christ. So, and it's been that journey from that time up until, you know, where I am, you know, right now. So... Um, of course, um, giving my life to Christ at that early stage did not exclude me from the regular challenges of, uh, of um, growing up and finding that your hormones are running crazy and uh, just also trying to deal with, okay, um, deal with, you know, lost and uh, attendant issues and all of that. So I'm pretty much that's my life, you know. So, but if there's any detail you want me to focus on at any point in time, just let me know so yeah. that I can there. But, uh, you know, in summary, uh, so I was exposed to the things of God very early and uh, we attended this very local church, you know. That was actually what brought my exposure to everything 
that had to do with God and the supernatural. Um, so at the time, there's a one pastor, Evelyn Aloka. She's late right now. Um, she remains iconic to um, my every exposure I had about God, about the supernatural, about, you know, I would always speak about this woman because she, everything I, I know now, I see now, she was such a strong teacher of the word. She spoke so much about the Holy Spirit, you know, it was, it was, it was a small local church, you know, where my mom took me to but there was such a raw manifestation of God's power, you know. With the, I mean, everything that I see in my ministry right now, a case of where, you know, mad people are coming, mad people used to come to the church, mad people will come, they will get healed, you know, all kinds of diseases will come. So she, she spoke to me so much about God, you know, and all of that. And, and we just, one thing I remember the church for is that we fasted a lot. We fasted and prayed a lot. We fasted, we can fast. So every now and then there was just this, you know, program, you know, and all that. And um, the presence of God was so real in the church that you don't commit sin and come. Like, I don't know how best to describe it. So it was that kind of church where, you know, you, you do something wrong and then you come to church and sit down. Exactly, exactly. So you see the, the prophetic will just pick you out, you know, and just say, there's somebody here, this is what. So what we usually did then, you know, according to it, so every time you're coming to church, you're begging God, God, please forgive me. Anything I've done wrong, please forgive me. You know, forgive me. I don't, you know, so, and that was just how I grew up, you know, that was the, my foundation. So Pastor Evelyn Aloka was my first exposure to everything about God, a woman of God, a very strong woman of God. She's late now, but she's, she was amazing in bringing me up, you know, in the matters of God. I remember, you know, she, she spoke a lot. Every now and then she would say, God told me, God told me, God told me. You know, she spoke a lot about what God told her. And I remember saying to God, the day I will hear your voice. I say to God, the day you will speak to me, I will lie down and ask you to march on me, you know, and all that. Because I just, as I didn't know how God used to speak to people, which ear they used to hear it. How does it, so one greatest challenge I had was hearing from God. It was one deep in time. I didn't know how people heard from God. I would cry. I would just, you know, beg God, just speak to me small, you know, and in fact, I didn't even know the day I started hearing from God. And since that day, it's been amazing. Hallelujah. And talking about hearing from God, I'm going to ask you some very specific questions. So let me be, you know, before I get there. What part did your parents, your mom or dad or your mom play, right. um, you know, in where you are? Because I, I, I remember you shared the story, you know, about your mom giving you provisions to give to a man of God that you hadn't taken. So yeah. can you summarize what part she played in sowing right. prayers and all of that? Yeah. So re remember I said it was my mom that took me to the church, you know, and all of that. So um, for my mom, the role that my mom played, I would say that my mom and Pastor Evelyn Aloka were the people that literally brought me to God. So, and uh, my mom like okay let me let me it's going to take me back to some other story right now so my mom said to me that god told her at my conception that i was going to be a voice to the nations that i was going to serve you know my mom was very literate my mom did not go to school so but my mom yes so my mom spoke so much about what god told her concerning me and all of that and she followed it through I don't know how many women who will be very excited to know that their child had gone to school and come back and I ended up in the church. My mom was that kind of person. You know, she would ask me, are you not going to church? Go to church now, go, you know, and all of my mom. So every now and then my mom reminded me, days I, I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would see that my mom had her hands laid on my feet and she was crying. My mom would lay her hands on her feet and she was crying and she was weeping. There were many times I've overheard my mom. I will overhear my mom in the middle of the night, you know, praying. And um, she was speaking Igbo, but the translation in English is God, use him, use him. Don't let mm. him fall. Don't let him. So my mom would just, you know, so one day I remember 
I don't forget this picture in my head. That day, my mom cooked obono soup, and then we were. I was, I was, I was asking her questions. So I told her. I, I remember making a joke of the prayer. I said that she has never asked God to do any other thing for me. All that she keeps asking God is, God, use me. God, use me. God, use me. God, use me. So, and she said clearly to me, she said, there is nothing else you will do in this life that will work only to do the work of God. <laughs> and it was like, you know, my mom used every opportunity to remind me about God. Wow. So you can imagine I go to church and that my pastor's wife would speak her own, even though it wasn't personal to me. It wasn't like I was a disciple. She just spoke generally from the platform. We come back home. My mom will, you know, continue. She would just speak about God. She prayed. She pr my mom literally prayed me into encounters. My mom literally showed me, yes, yeah, she prayed me into encounters. So, because part, when I was asking to hear the voice of God, I remember my mom joining me and telling me that we're going to pray. Now, before I heard God, the week I heard God, my mom had asked us, asked me and her to go on a fast. Now, all these things I'm telling you, Pastor Matt, I was just between the ages of, um, um, I'm talking about being between the ages of uh, 9, 10. 9, 10, 11, so, so you can imagine all of that, you know, pushing and all of that. So I literally didn't have a childhood. All I just had was just, you know, just getting there, my mom pushing me into God, you know, and all of that. So right at home, she spoke so much about God. She spoke about my assignment. She spoke about what God wanted me to do. She spoke about, you know, and all. my mom, it was so bad that my mom would not have me play with other children. We lived on the streets. I mean, we were poor, you know, so we lived in the, like what you would call, um, I don't know, it doesn't qualify to be a slum, but something that looked like a slum. So we lived in the streets, you know, and all of that. So my mom would not, I, my, if I'm playing with other children, my mom, how I know that my mom has arrived is when other children start running. So when they start running, I, I, so I was never lucky. So because by the time I tried to run, my mom would catch me. My mom would just start beating me. She would just hit me and she would tell me, what you are doing is not what God told me. What we are doing is not what God, I mean, she would speak it in vernacular. What you're doing is not what God told me and all of that. So she literally, my mom saw what God was. She, you, know, you can imagine at the time, my mom was saying, at that time, my mom was saying, you are a voice to nations. That, that wow. God told her that I will wow. carry the gospel from wow. one nation to another wow. nation. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. 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 Wow. Yes. yes. In the slum. Yes. The In the slum. slum. My yes. God. Yes. And okay. even, even, even when I went to school, eventually when um, a kind couple I met in church trained me in school, and then I had to um, start working with the, um, you know, uh, first of all, I worked with the World Bank, and then from working with the World Bank to working with the United Nations. And when I went to my mom to tell my mom, and I said to her, can you imagine that God had given me a job in you know, working? My mom would shake her head and all that. She told me she's not impressed with the job that what I'm doing is not what God told her. That this ah. job that I'm gotten is not what God... So I got angry with my mom because how can you tell me it's not what God told you? What, what on earth will God tell you? <laughs> this is something that every parent should be excited about. But my mom kept saying, that's not so. This was a woman who saw... And this is what I tell parents all the time. You're not qualified to parent a child God has not spoken to you about. Because train up a child in the way he should go. Before you train the child in the way he should go, you should know the way the child should go, you know. So you don't parent a child oh. out of the way the Hallelujah. child should go. Yes. Um, train up the child in the way he should go. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 Um, okay. Um, let's, let's, let's leave your mom. Marriage marriage because that's very critical to what you're doing now uh, not, how did you meet your wife and how did you meet pastor mrs Eno, the fire woman <laughs> so i i met my wife i had just been invited to preach in a certain fellowship um while we were on campus you know castle to be specific 
So, and I had just gone there that day and uh, I didn't, I didn't see her. Now, this is very funny. I didn't see her. So, but they were introducing the leaders, you know, the, those who were the leaders in the Sisters Fellowship. So they called her name and without seeing her, the Spirit of God said to me, that's your wife. So Hello. I was now, yes, <laughs> I'm very funny. The Spirit of God said to me, that's your wife. So I was now trying really hard to, you know, find <laughs> where she, you know, who was that sister that was spoken about and all of that. So eventually I now had to, one of my pastors now, she, he's my, one of my pastors now. So he was, you know, so I now had to call Dr. DK, you know, and I said, hey, come Tell me about this uh, sister that, uh, you know, so he just gisted me Sha, and all of that. So I said, okay, no problem. Um, so I now got to meet her. I asked that I, I should see her. So I was a pastor in, in school at the time. So I asked that I wanted to see her. So she came around, you know, she spoke a lot, you know, talked to me. So we're talking. So she liked to tell a lot of stories. So she was, she was talking, you know, she was very excited and, and gisting me and all of that. So we started working and all of that. I am so old school. So, and right there in front of our hostel, I said what I, I would never <laughs> want anybody to say. <laughs> I, would, I said what I never would want anybody to say. I just told her that, that God told me, <laughs> um, <laughs> that God told me that you're my wife. I did, I, I must own up, I said that and all that and she looked at me and uh, she walked she walked away she just left me you know and walked away so me i turned yes yes and and walked away so she stayed for some days she didn't talk to me and uh, after some days she now came back and said oh she's got some conviction you know and all of that so and that was how i met my wife and then of course um I think it was five years later. She remembers the dates more than myself. Um, five years later, we got married. And it was the beginning of another set of knowledge for me. Wow. Another set of knowledge. I, I know that I've had, you know, testimonies and her sharing from her book and all of that. I'm, I'm not sure that that's what I want to focus on today. But... Um, Permit me to ask this question because of the burden that we carry, people like you and I, you know, um, our generation, in, you know, balancing this fire, um, this burden, this passion of going to the nations, of, you know, being shared with literally the entire globe with the home front. Sincerely, Pastor Jay, how has that been? Share um, your and your trophies in in two minutes <laughs> um it's 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 not been anybody anybody who says it's easy you know or it's been it's not been easy at all it's not been easy um but the interesting thing the very fascinating thing is when you are um, married to someone who understands what you understand who sees what you see so wow. it just it just it just helps you a whole lot. Um, my wife is not here, but I can tell you, I don't know. And up until this evening, we just had midweek before we came out. You know, I don't know anybody who is excited about my ministry the way my wife is. I don't know who is very fascinated uh, about me. She's not in the country at the moment. You know, but. There is no one day we finish an SPPD in the morning. If she's not doing an SPPD that morning, there's no one day we finish an SPPD that as I turn on my phone after an SPPD, that the first person who is sending me a message is my wife. And she's saying to me, oh my goodness, you know, she's, she understands what I understand. So it makes ministry easier for me. But at the same time as well, you know, um, you see, because we are not living a fake life, right? That what we're doing is true to us and all that. Ministry conditions you in a certain way. And the burden of the, I do not know, but I, I do not, okay, maybe let me not preempt what you want to ask me, but um, it's, it's burdensome to live this life. 
um, people think um, it is it is it is funny, but it is burdensome to live this life. So, um, you know, it literally takes everything from you. I don't know about any other person, but um, what I do. Um, I was telling one of my pastors today. I say I, I wish I can do this work without my heart. Uh, I don't know how. Like I can remove my heart from the burden that I. I, I feel for people like how on, because you can't function in the supernatural without compassion. You Come can't. on. Come yes, on. You can't. Come on. So it, it comes from that depth, you know. I, I, and, you know, you, you, when you're talking, you know, that's why until God breaks, the brokenness is actually the access to seeing the strange acts of God. So this thing is, it's, it's, it's in me. It's just, it's just the every day. For the people yes. that brokenness is yes. access to seeing yes. the yes. conditions of God. Brokenness. Yes. yes. So, and when you are in that place, so every now and then, because you don't regulate the way God moves with you, you can't come and then somebody, you know, you, you, God just gives you a burden or you just finish something and you, the burden, you get a call and there's a burden, you open your message. Pastor Nat, people are hurting. Hey. People are yeah. hurting. There is so much pain in it. You see, even... With, well, I, I, I have a little problem with anyone who thinks that, oh, uh, there's so much miracle. There's so much uh, miracle. If you know how much evil, how much someone who is smiling right now, if you know how much pain they are going through, the, even from the pulpit to the pew, if you know how much pastors are concealing, if you know how much people just want to see God, they just want to see God and the pain. So how can I, how can I, how can I be, how can I be, I don't know, how can, how can I live a life that, that I, because I'm happy, because I'm okay, because I'm, you know, I, I, I think I've lost life. I've lost what life is. I guess I'm just, I'm just here to live for people. I'm just mm. here to fulfill. Yes, I, this this what I this what I live for. I don't I don't know what it means, right? You know, since NSPPD started over close to three years, I don't know what it means to just 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 hang out, just laugh. Because every one hour people see on the prayer platform, there is probably another seven hours that built it to be what people say oh and you know pastor now this morning you, you know we had a strange testimony of a woman whose womb was cut off her tubes were cut off everything Someone was cut off oh. yes everything oh. cleared out yes everything cleared out and god replaced all of it she did several scans and confusion everywhere confusion everywhere you see that kind of manifestation it does not happen in a vacuum it does not happen in a vacuum. So, and this is what I do. So the time you are preparing and then you are seeing this, it's just a crazy life. So for me, I, I've chosen to give up everything. And the way it affects the family is that, you know, my wife understands. She comes to the place, you know, where she has understood. And well, the truth is that our understanding is that our family is not a normal family. We are not a regular family family and this is what a lot of women who want to marry men in ministry must understand i'm signing up for not a normal life because <laughs> the truth yes you must understand i'm signing when others want to go for vacation you must understand that we are going to be watchmen over those who are going for vacation when <laughs> others want to be this is this this is what it is this is what it is because you find I that people are going for vacation, but you'll be the watchman over people going for vacation. What a life! Yes, yes, what a life, and all of that. Some people are sleeping, uh, and all of that. You are good, except, except we want to live, we want to become normal, you know, and everything. package it, and it's not real. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So, and this is exactly what it is. If people, because it is easier for somebody to sit back and say, oh, Pastor Jerry, I admire the anointing. I want the destiny on your life. They don't happen in vacuum. 
Pastor Nat, I've done NSPPD all throughout last night. I did I prayed up until this morning, did NSPPD in the morning, prepared for midweek, did midweek, and here again I am with you. And all, this is what our life has become. And trust me, I'm not even regretting it. I you know there are things you see this morning. I was crying on the altar. I said to God, Thank you. You can find me usable. You can you can you can you could have chosen anyone. You can find me usable. And I believe that. If this little consecration is what God expects, you know, get the focus and all of that. One thing I teach my children, you know, I remember you asked me about my family. So let me quickly tell my, uh, talk about my children. I quickly let my children know that you are not, you don't have a regular father. You have it. And you people must understand the way we do life and all of that. We, in, mm-hmm. we indoctrinate them into our life. Well, let them know this is what our mm. life is like. Because I remember my daughter, was it last year or last two years, was telling me her mom, you know, when are we going on vacation? When are we, you know, going on vacation and all of that? And my wife told her, we will go on vacation. We're going to go on vacation. But now there's an assignment God has given daddy, you know. So she he cannot leave that assignment now to go. And by the time we finish talking and all of that, she understood what the heart of the matter is. You know, you see, we don't, I don't talk about this because it wouldn't make sense to anybody, you know, and all of because I, I hear a lot of preachings going on. People say at the end of the day and all of that, I am not here to do what everybody is doing. I am not <laughs> here to be, you know, and all of that. Our call was not a general call. God did not call, you know, and all that. When he called, he called, it was specific. And that is what I just want to roll with until such a time, you know. It's taking everything. I will not lie. There are days I would wish I didn't have this assignment. There's days I just wish, I can I have my life back? Can I have, you know, all those times, you know, back again? And all of that, you literally don't have a life. I am I hide from people. You know, you move from here to here, people. You know, and and everything. And my heart is in this. I don't know how to say, but I want to see more people healed from cancer. I want to see more autistic children. You know, delivered. Yes. So, yes. Could this be what Paul was saying when he said, "I will spend and be spent"? Yes. I yes. Will... Yes. Personal, this is what it is. I will spend and be spent. You sit back and, you know, for every assignment you think you have done, you know, and then you're saying, God, I can't wait to get to my bed, you know, and all of that. Because I'm in the intercessory ministry. It is not just about what you pray there. And then God just begins to give you a burden, speaks to you about a nation, you know, that he is expecting you to go. And, and they don't even know or tells you about someone. And you wish I could call this person now. Do you know? I spent time praying for you, but God will not have you say anything to that person. So, and this is pretty much what Whoa. my journey has Whoa. been. You know, yes. Whoa, whoa, wow. This is, wow. I remember um, my wife and I went to Abuja um, on a weekend to minister and I'd finished ministering and a woman went to my wife and took her hands and held and said, please agree with me that, you know, I want, um, I want my younger sister to meet a man just like your husband. My wife didn't pray. She didn't pray that prayer. Um, can you drink of the cup? I'm drinking. I, I, I'm not sure they are ready. Yeah. I'm not sure they are ready. You know, the thing is that, uh, and that's what also a lot of people know, Pastor Jerry, you are an ideal husband. Far from it. <laughs> Far from me. I can never be an ideal husband. Everything you see is just packaging, you know, and all of that. Because if you get in to see what, what it feels like, and all of that. You can't have, you know, you know, the whole, I, I, want, I want my romantic husband. I want my whatever husband. I want my, you know, God has the, you know, when I, it's still talking about Apostle Paul, the moment where he said, my life has been poured as a libation, you know. So this one is just as a libation. And it, it's, it's, just, it's just what it is. So, mm. wow. wow, some some very precious stuff that, and people may need to just listen and listen, especially those in ministry, you know, 
Um, okay, let's move on. How did you catch this prayer fire month? You know, first, let's, um, I want to leave this for natural first. How did you, um, how did you encounter this prayer fire? There's something, I met a woman in Chicago, in Chicago, um, um, our papa, Bishop Francis had, you know, had also spoken about her. I think had uh, maybe recommended her or, or something. I knew she had a connection with Bishop. So on that basis, I went there because she was like a spiritual daughter to him. And I heard that this woman gives herself so much to prayer. I, I didn't believe it until I went there and she came to receive me and um, she was speaking English and just unconsciously as she was welcoming me, she was speaking in tongues, like, hello, sir, welcome, Kadaba, oh, um, I mean, prayer was flowing, I mean, she would, you know, say hi to people, talk a bit, and she's, there's tongues accompanying it. Well, I heard much later, she had gone through, like, some serious attack from the devil, which just pushed her to seek fire from God. And I'm saying that because I have also noticed that I, I watch people on, unknown to them. I found that even when you are preaching, unconsciously, you have, um, you know, um, tongues just sprinkling here and there, you know, alongside your words. And you can tell that prayer is flowing from this man. When did you catch that mantle, that fire, that prayer fire? Okay, so um, like I said to you, I, 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 I literally grew up both as a child and both as someone who just met God in a prayer atmosphere. So I had a mother that was praying and never joked with midnight prayers. My mom never joked with midnight prayers. So, and I was in a church as well that all we did a whole lot was just to pray. You know that so growing up as a child and growing up, I was just in a, I was like thrown into a prayer atmosphere. But all of these things does not give you a prayer life, as it were. It wow. was actually yes, being in a prayer atmosphere or born by a prayer, praying mother does not give you an. So like I said, until I was prayed into an encounter. And it was, my mother kept ask, praying to God, you know, praying for me and say, oh, she was taking me to church, but I never had an encounter until one day, I remember that day I had just come in from school and then I went to church for some reason I cannot explain. I knelt down. I had just come for that midweek service that they do every Wednesday. I just knelt down. I just started crying. I just started crying. I began to pray. And Pastor, now this thing I'm talking about, I probably was... I'm not sure, but between eight and nine, you know, and I was just praying and I was just crying. I was just praying and I was just crying and I was just praying and I was crying. And the rest of what happened was his history, you know. So, and you can imagine that was actually where that prayer unction began to rise, you know, that was where the prayer unction. And also, when I got encountered by that singular encounter, in fact, it was that day of encounter that even for me, the Lord was able to define my assignment for me way back, way back, define my assignment for me. So my mom became my prayer partner. My mom became my prayer partner. So we, be, we would pray, we would pray, you know, we would pray and basically. So, but that in itself was just a normal prayer and all of that. But when my mom died, uh, uh, before my mom died, yeah, before my mom died, because it's over 15 years now. So before my mom died, I just began to have um, a panting in my heart to keep praying through the night to keep praying through the night, to keep praying through the night and all that. So, and even while I did secular jobs, I would pray through the night, you know, and then in the morning, you know, I'll just maybe pray till at about 4 a.m., sleep a bit, little bit and all of that. So, and that was how my journey in the place of prayer, you know, started and all that. And this time around, I wasn't even praying for supernatural. It wasn't even about yeah. uh, let the blind see, let the name walk and all that. Yeah. And this, these were days where, 
I carried burdens that I didn't know where they were coming from, you know. And these burdens were not, I couldn't, I couldn't tell what the burden was. But you know how it is when you are taking a journey in the spirit, you know, that will ultimately lead to where you are right now, but you don't know where you're going to. So I will wake up in the night and I'm praying and I'm crying and I feel so burdened in my heart and I'm crying. And I'll, in fact, I remember when we got married, my wife had to ask me one day, he said, is this how your life will now be? Is this how your life will now be like? You always would, you know, pray in the night and all of that. And that was before she had her own prayer encounter. Because right now, if there's anything that excites her, it still is prayer, you know, and all of that. And this was exactly, I mean, I will pray. I don't know what I'm praying about. I will know. In fact, you know, in order to make sense of what was happening to me those nights, I would now be asking people, give me your prayer points. Give me your prayer point. Let me just see what I will be praying about. But I will still carry those prayer points, get in the place of prayer. And as I'm praying, and I'm praying through the night, and I, I can't speak English. As I'm praying into the night, I can't speak English. But one thing I must make mention of right here now is that I saw the dead rise. I saw the blind sea. I saw all of that. I saw massive numbers of people receiving. I saw it. Pastor man, I saw it, but it wasn't even something I wanted to see happen. That is actually the truth. I saw it because I didn't want, you know, I was very skeptical about the supernatural. I, don't, I didn't like anything that had to do with the, those that do miracles, you know, and all of that. I, you know, I wanted to be on the side. I wanted to choose my own assignment. I wanted to be the kind of person who preaches the word. I wanted to be known as a wood person. But all those that do miracles, I just felt like, you know, I'm, I come from the southeast of Nigeria. So I know a lot of scam and fake around all these uh, businesses. So I didn't want anything to be associated with the miraculous. But finally, this is where the prayer mantle took me. So I kept praying. And this thing, over 10 years, I prayed without even NSPPD coming on without NSPPD coming on. So now I think about it, those were years where God was preparing what the world is now feeding from. Those were years where God was just putting all of this in fortifying and all of that. And this is what I tell people, what you see now is an outcome of all that God, many years of what God has put together. Yes. So I'm right. in that space where I am also saying to God, for the years to come, what am wow. I building? What am I well, building for the many years that are to come? And so, and that is why my people will know up until now, my prayer life, anyone who is close to me will know if there's anything Pastor Jerry treasures, is it? Because this is the time where people, somebody could just settle and say, okay, well, it's all happening. But I yeah. can't, I yeah. can't, I literally can't. I must also add that the, the prayer fire and the signs and wonders is anchored on very, very strong word base. You are one, mm -hmm. you know, you know, young, you know, minister in our generation who, who has his foot, you know, steadfastly in the ancient path. Yes, you know, I mean, sometimes when you preach, you're like, this is, this, this is core SU. So the castle you mentioned today now made sense to me, you know, because there's that real SU strong. And of course, you know, that dynamic, you know, revelation aspect. So just to mention that, that, you know, so it's, it's a ministry that is, you know, well fused, the spirit and the word. So which explains the tangibility, you know, of, of the signs and wonders that, you know, we um, okay, um, I would skip the church, you know, and I want to jump to NSPPD and um, some matters, you know, arising. But I would like to say that there was a time, I don't know if I ever told you, I had a vision, I think I shared with you, I, I, I had a vision where I saw people put um, a screen at the, you know, the bridge that takes you across, I, I don't even know if you know it. In, in Lagos, the, 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 
two stadiums. There's a, a bridge that separates the two, you know, in Lagos to Larry. And in the vision, I saw people put a big screen and with chairs and, you know, benches and all, and they were watching NSPPD. That was, yeah. I think, maybe over a year ago or so, and all of that stuff. So, uh, just to say that um, some of us are not so surprised, of, you know, you know, to see that you know God is doing what He's doing. Because I'm going to touch on, you know, like the NSPPD conference we had in Houston. That was, I mean, I I I, I know about traffic in Camp Shiloh and all of that stuff, but that was my first time seeing that. You know, I I thought I was in camp in Houston with the people and all. So we'll get there. Now, how did NSPP this? Was it, um, was it pre-pandemic or did the pandemic blow it open? You know, so, I mean, how did that, this wave that has swept across the nations of the earth start? Okay, truth is, before the pandemic, I began to, you know, speak on a lot of subjects to my church people. And then and uh, I, I began to speak on subjects like the emergence of an unknown soldier. These were, these became series I was running, you know, and all of that. In fact, Pastor Nath, it's an interesting listen. I literally need to bring those messages for people to listen to again. Do you know up until details, I was prophesying to myself, saying I was teaching, you know, it, they were prophecy, you know, God was giving, you know, I know I talked about, you know, almost what might be seeming, what will eventually be like a shutdown and how this unknown soldier is going to arise, you know, and all of that. I spoke about different things, you know, and while all that message was going on, then the lockdown came and the lockdown came. So I didn't hear anything from God saying to me, there's going to be something called NSPPD. I didn't hear anything like that. So the lockdown came. And what now necessitated me, you know, pushed me in that place, you know. But you know when God has all the timetable rolled out, you know, and all of that, and then you are walking in the in in where God wants you to work, it just leads you to the things that you're doing, and so God specific when NSPPD um, the lockdown came, my wife and I I told my wife one day and I said in fact I had just invited the admin of the church my the church admin I said please come let's um, have a meeting now that the lockdown is here let's know what so I noticed that a lot of them were dragging their feet I mean it was okay and it was because of all the noise about you know uh, what was going on I said okay that's fine and uh, I decided I told my wife let's go and encourage people and then I was on a series, Psalm 91. There was a series I was doing in church on Psalm 91. So I just told my wife, let's go with Psalm 91 and just go and speak life to people. And that was it. That was what is now referred to as NSPPD. That is where it started. One thing happened is that we got in and we left the process for God. I just literally left the process for God. And God seemed to be saying, I've been looking for this. Okay, Pastor Nat, let me say this now. I remember. I remember this. You know, I forgot. But this just reminded me right now. God spoke to me and said to me, start an online prayer. Right? Start an online prayer platform. I called my wife and I told my wife, start an online prayer. That she should start an online Yes. Okay. Yes. I told my wife, start an online prayer. Are you getting what I'm saying? So my wife started online prayer platform before the pandemic. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. Yeah. Because, you know, 
Uh, so, and I remember standing in the, in the church one day, I'm, I'm telling my church people, you know, this is how God had asked me to do this. And then I asked, I, 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 I told my mama, I told my wife, oh, yeah, go and start this thing and just go ahead and do it and all of that. I'm just remembering this. It's now that I'm just remembering. So it was actually, so that um, NSPPD, um, rather lockdown was just pushing me into the thing that God had already asked me go and do so i just got in and then started doing it and then next thing it just kept evolving it was supposed to be encouragement from encouragement you know when something <laughs> is inside you it just started moving to that prayer thing you know moving to that prayer thing from that prayer thing do you know pastor Nath? We did everything we're doing on NSPPD. That's why sometimes I look back and I did everything we're doing on NSPPD. Testimonies. We didn't ask for tests. People started yes. sending us testimonies. That's they right. were not the ones sending. Yeah. 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 I, people, yes started sending us testimonies and just said, oh, look at what happened when you were praying about this. I'm like, okay. So the testimonies, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So if people are sending it, so let's be reading the testimonies. That's you know? right. So we, we started reading testimonies and all of that from send, uh, reading testimonies. People now started sending us video testimonies. So we now say, okay, you know what? Let's even tell people, make it official now. So you can go ahead and send us your video testimonies and all, everything. That is just how NSPPD became what it was and the compassion began to grow personal people are suffering people are suffering it's just you know how i say it all the time people don't understand where the passion is from i can't rest i can't sleep i can't i can not when i know that my life my life is is instrumental to the rising or falling of somebody else so how I, you know, I was, I was sharing this evening and I was telling them Jesus was talking about the cost of discipleship. I say, I say, any of you that wants to build a tower, Jesus was talking, looking at the similitude of a, a hypothetical example of what discipleship. I say, any of you that wants to build a tower. And I said to them, discipleship is about building a tower. It's not about building a bungalow. It's not about building something that is for you alone. You know, a disciple must understand that I must be built in a way, a tower accommodate is a refuge for an entire community. So, wow. and Jesus was going to, re, 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 you know, reconcile discipleship and he was reconciling it to a tower. Do you have capacity enough to cover others? If you are, if you, and this is what the mentality of what the church should change. If you're covering yourself alone, you are not ready for the end time move of God. You know, can your presence somewhere cover, cover, cover neighbors, cover 10 houses to the right, 10 houses to the left. Ten, let, let the world know that there is a salt that is living around here. And that's typically how the story of NSPPD came right now. I'm in that place where, you know, the burdens all over the world. That's enough. I can't stop. I, wow. can't, as in, I can't stop. Seeing the, the way God is changing the lives of people, you know, and seeing the, the, I don't know, I don't know. This is, NSPPD is deeper than I can explain. Wow. You know, I, I, I thought once, um, and that will bring me to my next question, you know, um, even with Hallelujah Challenge and online platforms, I mean, you know, what, and for how long will these things be? Eh? Okay. Yeah, for how long will these things be? You know, for how, you know, when um, would they end? Like an earlier challenge, people ask me, when is it going to end? All of that stuff. But I think I got the answer today. You know, the, the burden we have, we have for people. And, and while you were speaking, I, you know, and... I, I realized that in Luke 4, 18, the Bible says about Jesus, um, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to the brokenhearted. You realize that the purpose of the anointing is really for people who have issues. Yes. And as soon as we have, you know, we're in the world, you know, any message for me, as, as, as long as we're in the world, there will be, with, I mean, and since we're in the end time, you know, there's there's things will be darker. I mean, see what's happening, a nation, and you know, 
we can't even travel by road anymore. We, um, oh. Not shared. The, the economy, um, Naira is, uh, is, is, is almost 800 Naira. And it's in that same economy, people are still earning 30,000 Naira. So, I mean, you know, diseases, plagues, COVID and stuff. You know? yeah. So, yeah. for me, I'm like, so who would, who, would, who would help these people? You know, who would help these people? So, um, I mean, this, this chatting has really just even brought, because I keep saying to myself, okay, because from time to time, I'm like, Lord, I don't want to do this anymore. People think that you're just doing this. And then before you know, you know, you feel led to do it. And then I meet people who are encouraged, people who are breakthroughs, you know. And I know that the things we do, I know personally that beyond the testimonies that we see and hear, in God's wisdom, he won't allow you to hear some. Mm, yes, no respect of mm. this prayer steam and fire and praise mm. that is, you know, mm. what it does in the bigger picture, in, in mm. enforcing the will of God and the plans of God. I mean, I believe and I think that what we see and read are great, but the things we don't see are more permanent. The things we don't mm. see are bigger. So, but I mean, I said all of that to come here. How have you dealt with criticism from the world and from church, you know, and from, you know, from people who don't believe in God and from also people who, so how have you dealt with people just thinking that NSPPD is, is a cloud? I mean, there's nothing, they didn't call me, hallelujah, challenge, you know, he's looking for money, fame, he'll start the church and blah, 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 and all of that. So how have you dealt with you know, as you know, Paul said it this way: as as honest, but you know, you know, people see us as dubious, as as yes. you know. Yes. Have you that? I I guess your last line actually is what um, is where I'm going to borrow borrow um, uh, from. Um, I I would say for the world. I would for the world. I I don't know. I haven't. I haven't. It, it doesn't touch me because I know that they they don't have the light of understanding. So they will sit back and criticize what they don't understand. You know. Interrupting. Please, no one should log out. This, we're we're getting to a moment. I would advise you. I'm going to ask Pastor Jerry to speak a word. And if you know how the anointing works, he does not need NSPPD to release that word you need. So. I don't log out. Something is about to break out. Miracle signs and wonders. God will speak. God is already speaking. So this is just to help someone. Please go ahead, sir. And so, um, literally, I, I just realized that um, I don't have a problem with unbelievers at all. You know, because, uh, and even when they speak, I just tell myself they speak from their limited understanding of God's word and limited understanding of what the move of God is and all of that. Uh, but um, the one I will not um, fail to say that hurts a little bit um, is the criticisms from brethren, you know, those um, you, you, you believe that, you know, should understand the move of God. And um, it's come really hard. I, I would say that it's come really hard. It's, it's, been, um, it's been really, you know, sometimes, you know, I don't know how we, how we just want to make sure we make sure this thing dies. What can we do? What can we say? What can we, let's give, give him a name. Let's, let's brand him evil. Let's brand him who he's not. Let's, you know, say this, let's do this other one. And, and in my heart, I say to myself, I wish they knew me. I wish these people knew me that I know that I do everything I live for. I live for the gospel. I just want, so the, 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 there's nothing, I, I don't even know how to describe it. There's nothing about this that makes a certain group of people very excited. They don't, as far as they are concerned, oh, you know, it is all about, like you said, it's either they are talking about is cloud chasing or some, or maybe, you know, I mean, especially when it comes with it, some people say, you know, it, it's diabolical. It's uh, all that is going on is diabolical, or maybe they, they go and they, or maybe they attack my person. 
you know, or anything at all. So some of these things, um, when it has to do with unbelievers, those who are known, I don't pay attention to them. But when it has to do with believers, those are the ones that I've had to until everyone makes your skin tougher, right? Everyone makes your skin tougher. Prior to that, I had to break down at different times. And I say to God, you see me, you see my heart, you see this assignment, you see, you know, people will not pay attention. They will never pay attention to what God is doing now. And all they want to pay attention is, um, let's go back. Who is his mother? Who is his, uh, and all of that. And it, let me tell you, Pastor Nath, let me tell you one that is as petty as um, uh, all these people. Somebody actually said that, um, that a man of God, all these people who are being used, who said that their mothers are single parents and all of that, that um, Jesus, God had never used um, uh, people who are uh, from single parents, you know. God had never used that. Scriptures are very placed in the new, that God, there's always something about a father and a mother being in the life of someone and all of that. And as someone really? caught the clip, yes, someone caught the clip and sent to me and all of that. I said, Pastor Jerry, see what this person, I said, yeah, what has single parents had to do with God using somebody and all of that? Is there, is there something that will not, in, will not be used just to make sure that Someone, you know, my, was it David that said that? You know, it, it, even David, the it, 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 person, it, it is not even up for conversation, it, it's just when the thoughts of it. somebody said, Anybody who started, who started saying this, a pastor, another video that anybody who started saying, God, what God cannot do does not exist, that that person they should watch out for that person, he's going to die on time. <laughs> yes. And the video, someone sent me the video. It said that that person who started this, what God cannot do, does not exist. That they should watch out for that person. That that person is going to time with that that, that that is so blasphemous. That the, that statement is so black. I'm not even talking about the one that, the one that is just criticizing it normally. What God cannot do does not exist. It's not a problem for me. But when you are now going to say that I'm going to die untimely. And I'm asking myself, what yeah. should I do? Oh, yeah. Why should I die untimely? You know, so you can imagine the criticisms are, are pretty much, you know, a, a lot. But coming from the house of God, I must say the truth is that I've had a lot of people who just extended a hand, a high, I mean, privilege, you know. And do you know what, Pastor Nath? We did NSPPD in America and American preachers up until today, American preachers, the ones that our people revere, the ones that our people revere, reached out to me, Pastor Nath, and said, what you did in America has not happened in a long while. I was there now. I was there. And, and this is American preachers. But do you know that Nigerian, some of my people here, acting like nothing happened and which is fine as well you know so but um all together you know the, the, the way i've always seen that i think whether in our conversations or so I, i've always chosen to see even you know some of these criticisms and in the wisdom of god and like you've also said when you are criticized by the world, you know that they don't mm. know any better. Mm. And I always would wear the lens of love to say, you know what? Let me take that to be that God is using them to build character and to work out his, his nature and character from me. Because he that you know, bears fruit, his perch is pruned to bear, so that I can bear more, more food. So mm -hmm. we're seeing already, as a J, that nations are coming to your rising, kings are coming to your rising, the presidents are coming. So perhaps, you know, God is saying, you're on this pedestal, I can't afford to have you blow my name. So, you know, I'm going to get brethren and people to, to act on you you know, except the kind of who falls and die. It was a pastor that said this to me.
that people who just do online church alone rob themselves of spiritual growth. Because when you are in the company of believers, you know, you are, you are, you are privy to, you know, the gossips, the betrayals, and the things that mm. act on to kill you for you to live. Mm. So, mm. that's why we shouldn't forsake the assembly of the saints. Because it's not just the iron sharpens iron. All of that, mm. and all of that, you know, um, backbiting and the, 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 the stripes you get and the arrows you get work together to build, you know, it's like, like Paul saying that death worketh in me to produce life. You oh, know, so oh. that's the way I see it. You know, but something I want to say now for you, when you came to Wembley, I think it must have been the Lord who, let me see that. We were on, you know, our stand, you know, I think the VIP era. And you are coming there and I'm telling you, it was that night that I said, you know what? I need to be closer to this man. Now. I mean, I saw something that I hadn't seen in years of knowing you. I saw genuine brokenness. I mean, in that crowd in Wembley and, you know, I mean, God really moved and helped us. And I saw you, Pastor Jerry, just you found a corner. I mean, that, that part was away from camera. It was that. And this man was sobbing and crying and weeping. I know just and it really touched me and i said you know what mm, okay so all of these signs wonders and it's coming from a very very deep place that people may necessarily see. yes you may cry in public but what i saw was not because there was no camera there you know, it was just I and mean, we were shielded from the you know from the camera when the vip so it was a bit dark so people couldn't assess that point until you go to minister. And I saw, it was as though I, I, I took a peep into your secret place. And from that day, remember I, I said this to you in person, and I said to you that you, you, you stole my heart that day. And I said, you know what? I'd seen a part of Pastor Jerry that I hadn't seen, and people don't know. And if for any reason I hadn't, you know, I had looked at you in a way, you know, that all of that changed that night. And I think people have to know that because, you know, I, 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 I mean, I don't know you in, in total, but I believe God allowed me to see that, you know, and there's a, a, a generous part about you, and I think I'm going to say this, that people don't know. You give like crazy, you know. So, and, you know, taking all of these indices, it just makes sense that these things are not happening, but... It's, it's not magic. You, you, in this kingdom, somebody said, you don't blow, you grow. Uh, uh, we don't blow, we grow. So, uh, add that, you know, to say thank you for, um, and, and what we experienced in Houston. Let me say this, I was there. So, this is not a um, film trick. I was there, I saw, and, and like I said to you, standing there to minister, my heart was leaping for joy. And I'm like, this same night, God is raising us. God is raising us from this ruin going around the world. And it, it, it gave me hope. And God assured me that whatever we are going through in Nigeria uh, um, is about to change. Because we, we are, you and I, and the Selmans and the, all of these young guys God is raising, and, you know, are just speaking to what God is said to do in our nation you know so um thank you for uh, you know for, for just agreeing to have god do what he has done and still doing in your life you know i i, I had to say this publicly you know um i know i mean i can say this that the pastor jerry i know is authentic is genuine is a child of god you know and um I, I think I want to do this with a bit more people of our generation, just have these conversations and inspire, you know, you know, um, younger people. So once again, thank you. Now, because of time, and let's bring this to a close. What is God doing in our days? What, you know, yes, we see revivals bring, but um, 
from your perspective, what do you think God is doing? You know, um, that, that might sound like a very vast question, but just interpret it through what he's telling you. That's one, number one. Now, I was, I was going to ask you some very detailed questions. You know, you talked about hearing God. Now, how does the word of knowledge work with you? Now, for some people, I know that while, and from time to time, the way it works with me, in your prayer place, you know, because I, I want to know the, some specifics, do you have those impressions while ministering? Do you see a flash? Do you hear a voice? Or do you hear them in your secret place and while you are ministering, they come back to you and then you know that those words are for the moment. That's number two. And then um, number three, the crusades, the conferences, NSPPD, what's in for next year? And I think with those, we can end this part one and, you know, probably schedule a part two. Definitely. So because I, I, on top of my head, I didn't even realize that time had gone so much. And I, I was just I was just gearing. I'm like, we have not even touched the major things uh, as it were. So there's definitely going to be a part two. Uh, those parts that you think, you know, we, we haven't mm. touched. Yeah, I mean, we can schedule it in part two. Let me, let me answer the questions, you know. Um, so the number one question is uh, essentially about, um, what? sorry? What's God doing? What, what's God doing? I, I think in this season, there is a whole lot of major announcements heaven wants to make. And heaven is making those announcements through yielded vessels, not necessarily perfect vessels. Yieldedness, that is the, the, the heart of the matter. Yieldedness. There are perfect vessels that are not yielded. There are also yielded vessels that are not perfect, but their yieldedness is what heaven is going to use to perfect them. Wow. And I also want people to realize that in this season, heaven is calling for a collaboration. This is not what God is doing in this season is not what one man will sit down somewhere and say, this is Pastor Nath. And I'm not saying this because I'm on your platform. I already said that before. And I said, it was time for ministration in Houston. You didn't, you didn't tell yourself, I mean, I'm done with my own, uh, what they brought me here for. Let me go. Just the way, you know, I find, I wish I would have time to talk to Nigerian, you know, artists, you know, and all of that. You should be part of this service. You mm. should be part of the service. You finished that ministration. I know, and I came up, Pastor Matthew, you were there. You stood there, you, you knew that, okay, I mean, my ministry as a psalmist in this atmosphere, you know, is needed because this is what I came for. This is it's a supernatural meeting and all of that. You did, we, we didn't even share what the meeting is going to look like. But you picked up some things in the spirit. You stood there from the beginning, from the time I started up until the time I ended. And it, was, it looked like everybody was like, you could never have brought somebody more perfect than Pastor Nath. And I'm like, this is the spirit of God. If you came there and then you did what you did your time and went to see that, I will still be very excited. I will still be like, oh, thank God Pastor Nath came. But the collaboration, this is what God is doing in this season. And this is the time we must stop looking at ourselves, you know, criticizing where it's, that's not the heart. That's not what God needs now. A lot more collaboration, you know, a lot more looking at ourselves and knowing that we're in the mix, you know, together, and then we can foster whatever God is saying to us together and all of that. And what is God doing in this season? And I want everyone to realize from my own eyes, the waters have risen but there are just a few implementers of this atmosphere. You know, there are just a few persons. And what God is doing in this season, he's pushing out a lot of sons and daughters out of their comfort zone. Out of their comfort zone. Pastor now there are strong ministry gifts out there. There are more Pastor Jerry's, more Nathaniel Bass's, more Selman's, but they are still in their comfort zone. They are still in their comfort zone. And what God is doing in this season is get out, come out, come out. I need you. Come out, come out. If you don't step into the water, even if you're going to sink in the water, I will catch you. But by all means, don't stay in the boat. 
Don't stay mm -hmm. in the boat. Come and walk on the waters. And that's what God is doing. So peradventure, there are people who are listening to us right now. I see the Holy Spirit. That thing that you heard from God in your secret place is authentic. And all that God is saying is come out. Come out. We can make this thing work. No matter how many thousands that are already doing the work, it does Hallelujah. not foreclose what God wants to do with you. Hallelujah. It does not foreclose what God wants to do with you at all. And so that's essentially what I could go on and on about what God is doing in this season. And going on to the second question, and the second question is essentially about um, um, what, of, what, um, what, what, what was the second question? How does your word of, word of knowledge, knowledge, knowledge function with me? I, personal, I, yeah. I, 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 I essentially think that um, um, the word of knowledge, eh, all of the things that you've given, does it come um, to you as a flash? Does it come as a picture? Does it come as a voice? Does it come before? Does it come? At, all of them are all part of what happens to me. All of <laughs> them, every one of them. And, and personal, I do not know how to describe this, but it's so amazing. It's so amazing. If you've ever watched, especially if you watch the testimony of this woman that testified today, I put it on my page and all of that. And, and a lot of more, the word of knowledge are too precise and too specific. Now, one thing I understood, you cannot be better at a ministry gift you are not using. So the more you begin to push it, like right now, people, there's literally, I could, as I'm looking at you, Pastor Na, God has given me specifics about your life. Now, I'm not saying it. I didn't, just, I didn't just say this right now, but it just happens. As I look at people, God just begins to tell me specifics. And if I open my mouth and say it, you just know that. But it's not always been like this. But the moment I began to find myself in that place where this ministry gift has got to be used again and again, again and again, and you're pushing it and you're trusting what God, there is nothing. You know, when the Holy Spirit is talking to you and you're not paying attention or you're saying it's not the Holy Spirit, there's nothing that shuts down the voice of God than you're saying it's not God when it is God. So, but the more you put yourself in the use and all of that, and people must realize that you're a psalmist does not mean that God cannot walk with you in the place of the word of knowledge as in, and release people's words to them. Because, and I want you to also know, I want to tell people who are also, you know, believe that people are tired of basic word of knowledge. I don't know how best to describe it, but you must grow your ministry gift. You must grow your, min you must grow your ministry gift. Stop, you know, and all of that, you know. The, I, I remember, you know, asking my mother many years ago, and I said to my mom, there's a, there's a sister, Sister Maria, in our church, you know, whenever she wants to testify, and so whenever she wants to prophesy, you know, she just uses, you know, you know, she, she says, you know, she speaks the book, you know, I mean, I went to a large liberal church, she, she just keeps repeating the same line. I told my mom, I said, ah, is that the way God does? That God, does God have to be repeating the same thing, you know, because she just, and, the, you know, my people, my people, I am with you, my people, my people, I am with you, every now, my people, my I say, does God, why does God just say, my, my mom said to me that that's God speaking, that that God speaking, but that God cannot speak beyond how she has made herself available. So that her level of availability, she's been speaking. So her availability level is my people, my people, I am with you. My people, my people, I am with you. So every time she receives a word. She has to receive a word that is just between my people, my people, I am with you. Until she opens up her spirit some more and begins to push again, that is where God can pour new things into her spirit. And that one is there. So for that place, I, I found that the more I use the, this, uh, the, the gift and all of that, I, I, I don't know, but it's, such, it's, it's, it's a bliss. It's a, it's a place to be in. Is it, I literally have to be the one, and oh my goodness, I don't know, but it, one of the delightsome things about NSPPD is that NSPPDians look forward to the word of knowledge because it's not just, word of knowledge is not word of knowledge because you sing something somebody identifies with. It's the power that follows it. It's the That's power right. 
that follows it. So you can, and this is what makes us different from the magicians out there and the fake people out there. You can tell me my problem, but you never bring a solution to it. You never bring a solution. But the exciting thing is the fact that, whoa, that's your, what you said. And this is what I've experienced. Like the woman I told you, they cut off, the word of knowledge came. And, the, and this word of knowledge just came on the 28th of October. 28th of October. And then, boom, the miracles are following. So one of the high points of being on the altar of fire is that people, do you know, Pastor, now people literally place a demand on the altar. Pastor, God, please, uh, let, let Pastor Jerry mention my case. Let Pastor Jerry mention my case. Let Pastor Jerry mention my case. And all of that. Yes. And they, they, they place a demand on the anointing. And God answers them. God answers them. Because for me, it is continually, you know, and more to it as well. There's nothing God cannot trust you with when he knows you, have, you can't eat the glory. When he knows you cannot keep it, you can't eat it. I cannot eat it. And eating the glory is with everything that comes with this service. If at the end of the day, I don't know there's anything that God, if God, somebody comes somewhere and hands me over a khaki and all of that, I don't even know how to keep this thing. And all that. After a while, that's when you just tell me, give it out, give it, do this, um, do it, and all that. Hey, is it the, the, the money? And all, how can I keep it? You know, I'm just looking, how can I be more useful? And Pastor Nat, I want to say, this is the first time I am saying this, you know, but it, it, I mean, people don't know, right? My, I have an apostolic mindset. I have an apostolic mindset. You know, in the past few months, I have single-handedly, people don't know. Let me even shock you further. My wife will be hearing it for the first time today. Yes, I have single-handedly Right? Yes, if she's on this platform and if she's watching, she'll hear it for the first. I've single-handedly built two churches for some of the pastors. Wow. They have no affiliation with me. They don't have to have. Wow. So, and there is nothing that God can gift me as a person that will not return back to God. That's wow. what I live for. Wow. And this is exactly what it is. So, that one is that for that. Um, for NSPPD, what are we expecting for NSPPD um, and um, the conferences? For 2023, there will be a lot of it. There will be a lot of it, you know, there will be a lot of it. We already have locked down, you know, um, Sierra Leone. We have uh, at least this major cities, you know, we've locked down, you know, the UK as well. We've locked down. I'm talking about places where we've secured yes. the dates and secured the venue and all of that. We've locked down, you know, that one as well. We've locked down Ghana as well and all of yeah. that. So, and these are things that we're doing, you know, these ones where, so we I don't have, know how to make plans, but at the nick of time, God always comes out with a, I don't know how to say, I have just said the ones I've said now, and, but I want to let you know, Pastor Nat, we're not doing less than 15 cities next year. We're not doing less than 15 cities next year. Yes. 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 All of yes. this, SPPT every day, church service. Yes. New location. Yes. New location. Anyway, yes. anyway, I, um, just before we go, two things. Um, very quick, the, this phrase that has become... TikTok um, sensation, Instagram, Facebook, people use it on skits and churches everywhere. People have criticized it and blah. What God cannot do does not exist. By the way, what God does not do, so what God cannot do does not exist. I say it boldly, scriptural for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Where did that phrase come from? Did you know that one day this phrase will be written on cars abroad, on TikTok? How did it come about in a, in a, in a very short phrase? <laughs> now, thinking about it now, I, I, I would definitely say it was better to, you know, in the throne room. And all that, like you know, I like you already know, we we had our own, um, we had our own supernatural times in our church, 
we had our own supernatural moment, you know, in our church, you know, for all the miracles. So it was a, a phrase we used in our church a whole lot. I, I was using in the church, you know, and all of that. So it came from God. Every time there's a testimony, I would say, what well, God cannot do does not exist. My pastor started using it. We started writing. And this thing I'm telling you is many years ago. Many years ago, we just started using what God cannot do, does not exist. What God cannot do, you do, do, does not exist. So when NSPPD, so it was just a flow from who we, okay. who I was down to NSPPD. So what God cannot do, does not exist. So it wasn't a phrase like, for NSPPD, but NSPPD became the biggest market for, for the, this thing. So NSPPD has started pushing it. And then it now assumed a new supernatural outlook. I'm not joking. So people will make the declaration, the affirmation, what God cannot do does not exist. And you know, this is like, you know, touching the Inyanga part of God, touching the glory of Israel, Touching him that I mean, you, you just trigger God, you know, and then ascribe all that to him. He always acts. He always acts. So, and that is it. For us, we say on NSPT, it's not a statement, it's our war mantle. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I think this is a good place to pause. Um, I've just been of ministry like you, just jumped off the stage to do this, and this is this this has blessed me. It's been refreshing, and I'm sure that you, I mean, I hope to put this on YouTube so people can listen again. We hope to have a part two to, you know, touch on some more, um, you know, questions and, you know, very important areas. But I want you to just bless the people, just as the Lord leads you, release healing, release encouragement, release prophetic words in the next few minutes, and then we we'll call it a day. Thank you, sir. Father Leba de Koto Si and Gele Shobara da Kata da Leba Roso Kotoba Lea da Baha Akandia Si Petele Rodo Shadi Aba Father today O God Le Kada Si Adaboshi Ada Lord will release O God Rapa de Satala Yaya Foro Diada Lord healing O God on anyone who is infirmed on anyone who is infirmed on anyone who is infirmed Lord with today with the career, let every affliction, let every infirmity, let it be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Father, oh God, every limitation on every destiny, Lord, every destiny roadblock, Lord, everything, every weight, oh God, anyone fighting fierce battles, oh God, Lord, today I decree, let it be reversed in the name of of Jesus, let it be reversed in the name of Jesus. Father, recopa desia, eli para da shuken de reba suta, arapa li para koto shebe de berese. Father, today I decree, O God, le para zin de kata, let there be a release, O God, of your power, of your grace, O God, over the lives of your people. Madi para shuba de kasa de araba, karadi balaba. I see the healing power of God coming on someone whose father is urinating blood, whose Father is renating Lord. I see the healing power of God come on your father, Riba da Shube de Kada, Aradi Balasa, right now in the name of Jesus. I don't know what happened. Karosi Bara Basa. I don't know what happened, but there's a wedding that's supposed to hold in December. Karaba, it was just cancelled yesterday. It was cancelled yesterday, and you are on this place, you are on this platform by the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Maraba, I decree, let that cancellation be reversed. Let that cancellation be reversed. Let that Amen. cancellation be reversed. In the name of Jesus. For the Lord is opening blocked fallopian tubes. God is opening blocked fallopian tubes right now. I, I see someone who was calmed, who was calmed in what will look like a miraculous event. What you lost, what they scammed you of, they are returning it. They are returning it. They are returning it. They are returning it in less than 48 hours. Let it be returned in the name of Jesus. I literally would hear the Lord 
say that glaucoma is disappearing right now. Amen. Glaucoma is disappearing right now. Karadoshi abade, rabadabo I hear the Lord say, Karadibasa. I'm giving you speed for where you were slowed down, where Amen. you were slowed down, where you were Amen. slowed down. Barabasi kota barabasha. Let the speed of the Almighty, rabadaba, come upon wherever you were slowed down right now. In the name of Jesus, kaparade sukotoze, rebe de koshabada inta kasabada, rabada kosha. I decree and declare masubodoha over the life of everyone under the sound of our voice. Amen. Your hands will not be empty. Rapada papasa. Your spiritual tank will not be empty. Rekoto balazia. Let there be a new favor on your life. Let there be a new manifestation. Kopara italia barabashada. Rekoto la barabasada. Endoroboshi anababa. What is in your hands will not be missing. Great grace is upon your life. It is your season of manifestation. Nothing missing and nothing broken. I decree it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, man of God. Thank you, my brother. And please, people, help me go to Pastor Jerry's page. Thank you for coming on here. Um, I would, would work out a part two. This has been a blessing. This has been eye-opening. This has been encouraging even to me, I'm sure, to thousands of other people. We have over 11,000 people just right now listening to this. Um, thank God for the blessing of social media. You know, I believe God made social media for days like this, you know. So thank you so much, Pastor Jay. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. And get testimonies flowing. God bless you, sir. Bye-bye.